Do you find that you are often out of time with not enough time in the day? Well, you're gonna wanna pay attention to today's podcast. Let's do it. Salon owners are some of the most amazing people on planet Earth. The only problem is sometimes their hearts are so big and they give so much of themselves to their staff and guests that it creates unintended consequences. Our goal is to change the industry by elevating the way the rest of the world sees salons, spas, and barbershops and give it the credibility that it truly deserves. This is the Salon Owner Evo Revo Show. Today's podcast is brought to you by Salon Scale, allowing you to charge by what you know, not by what you feel. <laughs> hey, welcome to today's show. My name is Jason Never, and with me is my partner, Doug Campbell. What's going on, Doug? Good to have you on. How's it going? Going super good, man. Uh, really looking forward to talking about this subject today because I think so many people uh, get caught up in this idea, Doug, that they're they don't have enough time in the day right it's like you've heard that before it's like uh, I, I said it at an event we were doing gosh man pre t pre pandemic uh, i said this in a training most people over plan a day under plan a year and underestimate what they can get accomplished in a decade and i think people get caught up so bad doug in the idea that like there's just not enough time and they, and they do some really bad things as salon owners that that get them in trouble um what in your mind, Doug, uh, what in your mind are some of the things that trip up salon owners the most to get their time in trouble? Well, I think one of the biggest things is they they hear, you know, hey, I need to get somebody to do something else, or I need to I need to get this off my plate and hand it to somebody else, or do something uh, along those lines, and, and then they so they just do it real quick, and when they do it like that, then it, it doesn't work because they didn't mm -hmm. set the person up for success. They're like, yeah. oh. Th that didn't work. So I, you know, I've, I've heard it before. It's like, oh, Doug, you know, I've, I've tried that. It just doesn't work. So my right. question to them is, you know, what was your setup? You know, tell me about, tell me about, you know, how you got your system in place. Tell me about how you got real granular about what you're handing off. So you're setting the person up for success. Well, well, well they've been working for me a while. They should have known that. They should know. They should. <laughs> <laughs> I totally. And I think it, this is it, right? It's like, People said the other day, I was doing training about time versus money uh, in the academy, whatever it was, uh, Wednesday, last Wednesday. And we were talking about, you know, people say, you know, time is our most precious asset and you can't buy more time. And in theory, they're right, right, Doug? Like you can't, like, I can't say, here's a thousand dollars, Doug, I'd like to buy another year of my life yet back or a hundred thousand dollars or a million dollars. Like I can't do it. I can't buy my own time back in that regard. But what I can do is I can say, hey, I'm going to go and this this happens a lot like I'm going to go to the grocery store and go shopping for groceries for an hour or I can pay the grocery people to put the groceries in the back of my trunk or drop them off at my house and that surcharge might cost I don't know let's 20 bucks 20 dollars surcharge for them to pack my groceries well I just bought an hour of my life back in theory for that 20 dollars and I think that idea is we can buy our time back from things that we're obligated to do. I'll say it again, I can buy my time back from things I'm obligated to do. Could be a car wash, it could be uh, running to the to the supply store, it could be, um, oh, I don't know, maybe like hiring people to cut hair for the guests you used to have, but now somebody else is doing it and you're making a percentage on that time. That's what it's like to be a business owner, is you literally are using your money to buy time from other people to run your salon. Like, can we be clear on that? Can you do me a favor, comment, time in the chat is starting to make sense you can actually buy time as a business owner and that's your entire job is to understand how to buy time but what happens doug is people are very good at doing that with um with their stylus and with like that that type of work like they're very good like i'm really clear on if i give a stylus money they will do that job and i could buy back time but then when it comes to the management tasks and ownership tasks and like running to the store doing that kind of stuff it starts to get sideways yeah, I mean, you know, it, 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 writing up schedules, uh, doing inventory, all mm -hmm. things that, that owners want to hold on to. And like I said, they've let go of it at times, mm -hmm. yeah. and then someone didn't do it well. So, but they're so they're the default is I have to take it back if I want it done right. Right. Which yeah. It's the, that's the that's the left turn. And so, yeah. what I say is if that happened, and it, and it will. I mean, even if you put a good when, system together, when it happens someone, to you, <laughs> yeah, you know, someone may may poke a hole in your system. Yeah. Then what you do is you say, okay, let me write the system a little better. Yeah. Instead of yeah. me taking it back, because it's like we talk about, you know, when you're a business owner, 
uh, you've got to start to be a, the architect of your business, not the doer, not the not the laborer, not the people doing the things. You're the architect. You're de you're designing systems to make this thing function where everybody wins. The client wins, the people working for you win, and you ultimately win. But if you're caught up doing other things with your time and you don't have the time to do work on your business and build the architecture of your business, mm -hmm. then that's where you start to run into trouble. And that's where you get stuck, quite honestly. And that happens in salon world all the time. In business owners, I'm busy, I'm this much behind chair and I'm trying to get all this done. And instead of figuring out how to get other people to do it, which I mean, I'll be honest with you, it's, it's a little bit of a lift. It's gonna take a little, a little bit, bit. Of a lift up front, but the payoff is yeah. huge yeah. because you just say inside so I would pick what's the first what would be the biggest thing that would make the biggest difference to get off my plate right now mm -hmm. and let me start really writing a system for that yeah. and to your point on personal stuff I mean you know if you're washing your own car unless you really really love washing your car if if you're still watching you know, find you a good detail person that can come and do it while you're at work or, or at some other time uh, you know Get yourself a, a housekeeper, and if you can't afford one every week, then get one, one once, once a month. Yeah, right. Yeah, uh, you know, there's a laundry service in your area. See what that would do to get. But then, so uh, be clear about this: too. when you're getting your time back, make sure that you're making good use of the time that you're getting. <laughs> you I that. think, I think the idea is: are you upgrading your time? Yes. Or are you yeah. upgrading it? So, like, if you're doing, if you're doing a, a minimum wage task in your business then you are you are saying to the universe i would like to make minimum wage yep right like uh i you know i uh as i was thinking about some of these things that people get caught up in they get caught up in jobs that are small because that's what they've seen other people do they worked for another salon owner and they did the laundry they worked for another because like, again maybe you have a laundry service that comes to the salon and takes the laundry out maybe you have laundry on site maybe you do there's a lot of different ways to do it but i think what ends up happening is we fall into a trap of the salon owner that maybe we used to work for right that comes up or you fall into the trap of well i've just always done it that way and when you were a smaller salon, it was fine for you to do that. But now you become a bigger salon and you're taxed for time. You either have to find people, services, or software to replace your time and do it in an effective way. You know, I, uh, Doug, a couple of years ago, um, you know, I got to, I had the privilege of flying to Japan and going and speaking on this, this, this stage in front of 800 people in Japan uh, for this marketing conference. And what was really interesting about going to that conference is that uh, I learned a lot about um, software in Japan. And I know Japan is like the craziest technology. Like they have like literally full-size transformer robots that are like in downtown Japan that you can go and see because their hardware is incredible. But you know what's interesting about Japan, Doug, is their software is actually way behind. I don't mean to go too, down, too far down this path, but like the idea is, is that because it's really hard to translate things, especially software, from English to Japanese. And America leads for a lot of different software tools. Japan doesn't have as much software, even though they have a lot of hardware. What that means is things like MailChimp or something that you would use as a CRM to just email out to all your clients and guests. Like, I know it sounds crazy. This is like four years ago. But in Japan, they had no mass emailing software. It didn't exist like five years ago. No, Matt, could you imagine if you had to, if you had to go and go, okay, I'm going to load up every single one of my customers inside my salon, uh, email list. And like, I'm going to send each one of them a mail at, at a time, or you'd have to blind copy everybody or do some weird cause they didn't have email software. Like that's nuts, right? We use software tools that get us leverage. You remember when we used to have to like write down receipts on paper. Now we do it on an iPad, like software buys your time, people buy your time, but you also have to be aware of all the things that are the traps that you get stuck in on a daily basis. When we come back, I'm going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about what are some of the biggest upgrades we've seen salon owners make to use their time for how you can actually make those upgrades and what are some of the mental challenges you're going to have to face in order to upgrade your time. We'll be right back after this short break. Hey HPSA listeners, let me ask you this. Are you tired of not knowing what your hair color is costing you on every appointment and watching it chew up your profit? Well, with Salon Scale, we take the guesswork out for you. Using a mobile app paired with the Bluetooth scale, Salon Scale will tell you exactly what your color is costing you on every bowl mix down to the ground. 
as you mix salon scale. We'll also digitally store your formulas and track how much product is being used in real time. So you can manage your inventory, cover your expenses, and generate more profit in your salon. Use promo code HPSA10 to get 10% off an annual subscription. Salon Scale, the new standard for mixing color. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Uh, we're talking today about how do you leverage your time? How do you actually make best use of your time and upgrade your time with the things that you do inside the salon? Right, Doug, we have a lot of clients inside the academy that have been working very diligently to upgrade their time. And the way we know that they've upgraded their time is because they, re they start to earn more income. And does that make sense? Like if you are earning more income month on month on month and year on year on year, you're upgrading the things that you're doing with your time. Now, there's some people who just go, well, hey, I'm earning more because I'm working harder. Right. Remember, right. when you're a stylist, when you're a stylist behind the chair, the only there's two ways for you to to, uh, to make more money, become busier or charge more. That's it. Right. That's all you can do as a stylist, become busier or charge more. Those are the two things and hopefully those go in tandem and you get there. So the problem is when you're an employee and you work for somebody else, get busier, charge more. Those are the two things you can do. But as a salon owner, well, who's your customer? You're not you can't just charge your staff more like you're not going to charge your staff more for you being the owner. So then you default to the other answer, which is, well, then Doug, I just need to get busier. Busier. Right? I just need to be busier. So I'm going to work twice as hard. I'm going to put in 60 hour weeks. I'm going to put in 80 hour weeks. I'm going to start doing all these things and I'm going to be busier because that's what I know how to do as a stylist. If you can relate, do me a favor and type in busier in the chat. If you're on with us on the video live right now, because I think being busy becomes the default answer to I want to earn more money, but it's not about being busier. It's about delegating better. I, right. I, we've talked about this, these two words before delegate versus abdicate abdicate delegate means to give somebody a set of tasks and hold them accountable to get it done abdicate means just throw tasks at people and hope and hope for the best yeah, wash your hands of it it's yours yeah yeah and, and doug that happens all the time right is people like you said it earlier and I, I think this one comes up a lot with salon owners is they're like well i gave it to somebody and they should know they've seen me do it enough right. or they should know they've been here long enough it's like they should get it because whatever but if you don't have a training system, if you don't have a process, if you don't have a way to hold them accountable, if you don't have metrics to track, you're setting yourself up for fail, failure, man. Yep. Right? So what, what do you think, Doug? What are some of the top things that people that you've seen Academy members upgrade in their lives that like all of a sudden gave them their time back? What are the good ones? What are the bad ones? What are some ones that you've seen that have been really helpful for salons? I think one, just whenever the light bulb comes on of them truly understanding how that they can replace themselves in some areas. And one of the things that's interesting, like it's saying this mindset, I need to work a lot behind you. And I, I'm setting the example of how you work behind the chair and make a lot of money. But mm. you're so busy doing that and running the business. Nobody in your staff wants to be you. Mm. And that's a problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So it's so the idea is, you know, how do you change that to where you're showing not only how to have money, but have a great lifestyle? Because that's the thing yeah. that people, people are going to want to be like you if you can show them a path of how to use this career to move yourself forward and have a great lifestyle, yeah. do amazing work. And for the hours that you do behind the chair, if you still do, that you charge a premium for doing that. And you have, and then, you, and then it's open to all them. It's like, you can do this. Now you got a bunch of people going, I want to do what they're doing. It, but yeah. I mean, we run into it all the time. The Academy It's like, I don't understand why it's like, nobody wants to be you. I'm sorry. Right. You know, it's just that they don't want to work the hours you work. They don't want to be frustrated like you are. And so I think the thing is like, when they start putting in, you know, a leadership team, when they start building in a management team, they actually start compensating people for doing different things, you know, get out of that mentality of, you know, I did a bunch of work for free in the beginning. So anyone that's going to come into this business or buy into this business needs to understand they what it's work like for sacrifice. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, you're not going to get very far with that one. But when they yeah. really get to the point, they're willing to compensate. Look, if I could pay somebody $20 an hour to take this off my plate, and then I could upgrade that and I could do a $40, $50 an hour task, then yeah. that's well worth doing. Uh, so, I mean, I yeah. think it's that. And uh, the other thing I'd say too is people really start to pay attention to their software systems. Uh, because I think, you know, people, there's been a lot of changes, I'd say over the last six years, there's been significant changes in Massive. the marketing side of, of yeah. the softwares. And so you really need to dig in and find out what your software does, what it's capable of, and then 
think about, and that's why leadership teams are a great thing to have. And your leadership teams, they say, how could we use this to free up some time and leverage some things here right. and get creative with it. But I mean, you're paying for that software tool as they you know, use it to its fullest extent. It just being a booking and paying thing is not really, that's not a good software. That's not a good use of your software. Yeah, I, I wanna give you a curveball here, Doug, because I wanna I want to talk about this one that I think, I this is a trap that I found myself in over and over and over again. You've probably seen it in our business and, I, and I'm starting to learn how to get out of it myself. And I wanna share this for other people is that in the beginning stages of being a business owner, you have to learn how to do everything, right? Is like, remember, you know, you would learn how to cut hair. You would learn to do a color. You would learn to, you know, be more efficient with your time. You would learn to do a better consultation. And what happens as a business owner, it's like, you learn to run a team meeting. You learn how to do your accounting. You learn how to do some, you know, Canva design because you, you're like, I better learn how to do that because I don't, I don't have the money Right? I don't have the money to pay a designer. And if I pay a designer, it's gonna cost me $1,000. If I do it myself, it gets done for free or for the cost of buying a Canva subscription for the hundred bucks or I don't know what Canva runs, but like maybe it's a free version, but you, 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 you start learning how to do things on your own, right, Doug? So you're like, I'm gonna learn this, I'm gonna learn that, and I'm gonna learn this, and I'm gonna learn that. You know what the problem is? At some point, you have to pay someone to do it so you can get your time back. It's no longer about you learning how to do another part of the business. Like, could you learn to do all your marketing and advertising? Could you go on Google and learn how to do your SEO? Could you learn how to run your own Facebook ads? Could you learn how to do all those things? Absolutely. And in the beginning stages of your salon ownership journey, you should be doing those things. But there becomes a point when you go, gosh, Doug, I am just so busy. You're like, well, what are you busy doing? And they you look at their calendar and they're like, well, on Tuesdays, I make all the Canva art for all my social media. And then I spend four hours posting it on Wednesdays. And then on Thursdays, I run my boosted posts. And then I, I run to the store and I pick this up. And you're like, what are you doing with your time? Because as soon as you look at your time, and this is this is like the most important formula you could get out of this entire recording uh, of like listening to this, watching it, or whatever you're doing right now, however you're consuming this content. Take the number or the, the amount of money you earn per per week okay so if you if you if you earn monthly like take your monthly divide it by 4.3 that's your weekly income okay take the amount of money you earn per week and divide it by the number of hours that you work so if you earn a thousand dollars a week divide a thousand dollars by 40. if you earn ten thousand dollars a week divide ten thousand dollars by 40. and i say 40 i'm assuming you might work 30, you might work 40, you might work 60, but do a real number. So if you make $1,000 a week, if I divide that by 40 hours, that's what you're working, you're making 25 bucks an hour, right? You're making 25 bucks an hour if you're making 1,000 bucks a week. You're making $10,000 a week, divide that by 40. Congratulations, you're making $250 an hour. I gotta know what your hourly is, but find out what your hourly uh, earning is. And this is the goal, I learned this from a buddy of mine, Dan Martell, it just really blew my mind, is he said, Anything that can be done for half of your hourly rate, like meaning like if you make 20 bucks an hour and you can hire somebody to do it for 10, you immediately need to outsource that job to that person for half of your hourly rate. And it'll just start to get you feeling comfortable with it. So if you're making 20 bucks an hour and you can find somebody to do it for 10, outsource it, get it done by somebody else. Um, and that, that really changed a lot of stuff for me. And I, I wanna give you one other tip that uh, a buddy of mine uh, named Tristan Bond, uh, such, such a cool name, it's like Tristan. <laughs> Bond, Tristan Bond. Anyway, cool name. Um, Tristan Bond said something to me and I really learned this valuable lesson from him. He's another business owner like Doug and I that run similar company. And he said to me, I, I called him up one day and he wanted to learn something. And actually he just called me last week. That's what made me think of it. He called me up and he said, hey Jason, I wanna get like my Facebook group handled. And he's like, do you know anybody who just sets it up for you? Because I don't wanna learn how to do it. And like, it was a real good reminder for me that sometimes when I'm like, oh, I wanna set up a Facebook group, let me learn how to do it so there I so I can. Versus Tristan was just like, I just wanna pay somebody who already knows how to do it, to do it, cause it's gonna save me time. Might cost me more money, but it'll save me more time. And in the long run, it's moving him really fast. And he runs a giant company, constantly looking for who he can pay to do something to save him time. It's a very different mindset as an owner, right? When you have that type of mindset, Doug? Yeah, so I mean, I think it's so it's like the the evolution, like like you said, when you first start out and you're small, you are having to wear a lot of hats. You're doing yeah. a lot of things, but it's like like so an example is like you know if you're ordering and and counting your inventory in the beginning, you know you're carrying 
probably one or two small lines. You're not even carrying the whole line. It yep. takes you all of 20 minutes to do that task. No big deal. And, right. But then as you grow and you start being on multiple lines, now it's taking you hours to get this thing right. done and hours to make sure that it's right. And so, I mean, those are the things like, yeah, you had to do it. And when it was small, when it was a small task, when you were small, yeah. it was okay that you did it. But now right. they say that, that's where people get stuck. That's where people get stuck. I just don't know why I can't get past this point. Um, yeah. It's because they haven't learned how to start handing those things off to free up their time to work on the next bigger thing. Because when you're a bigger business, yeah. there are more things you're going to have to have your brain on. And if you're doing smaller tasks, your brain's not going to be on the things that you need it to be on. Yeah. Your business owner habits are controlling the size of your business. Mm -hmm. I'll say it again. Your business owner habits are controlling the size of your business. So the habits you had when you were small, if you have the same habits and you haven't been upgrading your habits, you haven't been upgrading your people, you haven't been upgrading your managers, you haven't been upgrading. And by the way, sometimes there's things you need to learn yourself. Sometimes there's things you need to learn to let go of, <laughs> right? So either learn it yourself or learn to let go of it and it'll upgrade your time. It'll put you in a position and a capacity that you can start to have the reality that you want. And I, I think that's what we're getting at today is if you want to buy your time back, you have to start buying into the idea that your time is more valuable, right? When you do that, it changes everything and it becomes, uh, you upgrade your time and you move into a different stratosphere of understanding what you do with your resource, with your time, your effort, and your money. Yeah, because I think it makes a big difference in the profitability of companies when people can get to that point and they can really have their mind on the upper level things. And so, yeah, there's going to be more things that you're going to have to learn, but it needs to be learning an upgraded thing. How right. is this going to upgrade or leverage me up? And what do I have to let go of in order to do that? That's, that's the way that ladder works. Uh, yeah. there, there's still things you're going to have to learn and figure out, uh, but you just got to get around the right people to figure it out. And and then right. it's like, what's the next step? What's the next step? Because you know, if you're a half a million dollar company, you can't start doing what a two, three million dollar company is doing. Totally you know, if you're a two, three million dollar company, you can't be doing what a $10 million company is doing. But you're going to have to evolve over time in how you're doing and what you're learning and what you can leverage in order to get to those bigger numbers. Yeah. So guys, I, I hope this was really valuable for you today as we're discussing this topic of, you know, trading your time, trading your money, uh, trading, you know, different resources and starting to utilize people to buy your time back. Because if you're in complete overwhelm and you're a small salon, you're going to have to be efficient. You're going to have to find efficiencies. But just remember that you don't buy your time back later as you start to grow your salon by doing harder work or becoming busier. You buy it back with leveraging other people, creating systems and processes and utilizing tools, software, people, and, um, and contractors to get more accomplished. So if you want any more help or you want to be around a bunch of other salon owners, obviously shoot me a message and just say, hey, Jason, I'd love some help. Uh, and we'll get you great information on other resources, other tools. We got tons of free resources. Or if you want to find out about our, our academy and how to apply for that, do me a favor and say, tell me more about the academy. We'd love to help you. But if not, watch another, watch, listen, or just pay attention to another podcast. Stay up with all these. Do me a favor, subscribe, uh, and just and, and it really will help you to continue to upgrade who you are as a salon owner, so you can be the best version of yourself possible. You can make the income that you deserve because we want to grow. Uh, millions of stylists all over the planet. And we do that because of you listening right now. So do me a favor. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe and give us a rating too. If you like today's podcast, you're like, dang, Jason, that one spoke to my soul. I needed to hear that today. <laughs> We'd really appreciate you uh, putting a review in there because it helps us to reach other people. So thanks for being on today. Thanks for joining us on the podcast. Doug, as always, man, great discussion today. Talk soon, bud. Yep. See you later. Bye for now, guys. Thanks for listening to the Evo Revo podcast. Today's podcast was brought to you by Salon Scale, allowing you to charge by what you know, not by what you feel. Please subscribe, leave us a review, and you can always get more information, including show notes and the video episodes at evorevopodcast.com.